Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. Let's get started. We do have a system of equations. x squared plus xy plus y squared is equal to 39, y squared plus yz plus z squared is equal to 49, and z squared plus zx plus x squared is equal to 19. And we're looking for real solutions. So this looks like a complicated system, right? I mean, somewhat. Uh, we're going to solve it using an interesting method. Obviously, there's more than one way to approach this problem. You can have a geometric approach. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comment section down below if you have any alternatives. So here's my approach. I'm going to go ahead and take each equation and multiply by something that would make it a little bit more manageable. And that would be kind of like, a, I can say, pretty much like a conjugate, you know, when we use it, radicals, that type of thing. So if you... If you look at x squared plus xy plus y squared, and I think we used this idea in the video from yesterday as well, you're going to get something like a difference of two cubes or the sum of two cubes. In this case, it's going to be a difference because xy is positive. So, to keep a long story short, I'd like to take the first expression, x squared plus xy plus y squared, and multiply that by x minus y. And of course, in this case, I'm assuming that x does not equal y, and you can probably see from these equations that x, y, z are gonna be different. Can they all be equal? That's another question to think about, but I don't think they're gonna be, otherwise we would have some type of symmetry here. Okay, so when I multiply both sides by x minus y, I'm assuming that x does not equal y because we don't wanna make, um, we don't wanna multiply by zero, obviously. And then, of course, you have to do it on the right-hand side as well. Now, when you do this, you're going to get something like this. This uh, The left-hand side is going to be x cubed minus y cubed, right? Okay, great. That's simple. And the right-hand side is just going to be this one. Well, what is the advantage of doing this? You'll see in a little bit. I'm going to be able to simplify this in a meaningful manner if I do this. So, I'll do this to every single equation. Obviously, I'm going to take the second one. Uh, and let me just skip that part and give you what's going to happen when we do. So I'm going to multiply this one by y minus z and multiply this one by z minus x. So it's going to be all good. Okay. The second equation when I multiply, it's going to be y cubed minus z cubed equals 49 times y minus z. Remember, we're multiplying both sides by y minus z here. And the third one we're multiplying by z minus x. So the left hand side is going to be z cubed minus x cubed. And the right-hand side is going to be 19 multiplied by z minus x. Okay, cool. Now, here's the coolest part. We're going to add these equations after the manipulation, of course, right? When we add these up, you're going to notice that negative y cubed and y cubed is 0. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. z cubed minus z cubed is 0. So, the left-hand side is 0. Beautiful. That's why we're adding this. That's why we're doing this, okay? The, the whole purpose is to get a 0 on one side so that we can kind of work it out. Cool. Now, we're going to be adding all of these up, but let me go ahead and ex expand. Uh, 39x minus 39y plus 49y minus 49z. And again, I'm running out of room. 19z minus 19x. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Um, 39x minus 19x is going to give me 20x. Negative 39y plus 49y, that's going to give me 10y. And then z is going to be negative 30z. And this is equal to 0. Obviously, we can divide both sides by 10 because um, they have a common factor. So we get x 2x plus y minus 3z is equal to 0. Beautiful. Awesome. Great. Why? Because now we can express one of, one of the variables in terms of the other ones. And this is great. Okay. So this is the biggest step, basically, that we need to take. But there's, of course, more to it. So stay tuned. Now, what am I going to do from here? I'd like to isolate y because that's the one with uh, coefficient 1. So it might be a little easier to do that. I mean, you can do it with any variable. Like you can isolate x, you can isolate z, but I'd like to isolate y. And that would be 3z minus 2x. So this is my key that will open the door, right? So what I'd like to do with that one is now I, I'm able to express basically y in terms of x and z. So what's so good about that is that if you go back to the original equations, if you go back to the original, you notice that each equation is written in terms of two of the variables. So if I'm able to express y in terms of z and x, I can actually plug it into the first equation and then to the second equation. 
Why not the third one? Because the third one doesn't have any Y in it. Okay, that's why. So that's my next step. First step was expressing Y after some manipulations, expressing Y in terms of Z and X. My second big step is gonna be the substitution. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and substitute all these, um, the Y values into these equations, okay? So my first equation is X squared plus XY plus Y squared. And that is equal to 39, right? Okay, that's my first equation. And then I'd like to replace Y with 3z minus 2x. So let's go do it everywhere. 3z minus 2x. And then plus, I have to square the quantity 3z minus 2x. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and simplify this as much as we can. And then let's see what happens. Now, by doing this, what am I achieving? Well, I'm getting an equation in x and z, correct? Okay, cool. Then I should be able to use it. Let's see how this goes. Let's simplify this, x squared plus 3xz minus 2x squared plus, I'm going to square the difference here, so it's going to be 9z squared minus 12zx plus 4x squared, and the whole thing is equal to 39. Now, the left-hand side can be simplified. So let's see, x squared plus 4x squared is equal to 5x squared minus 2x squared is 3x squared. I have 3xz and negative 12xz, so that will be negative 9xz, right? And then I have 9z squared, and that's basically the only thing that I have, plus 9z squared. There's no other z squared here because we didn't square z anywhere else, so that should be good, right? Okay, this is equal to 39, and what am I going to do with this? I'm going to divide both sides by 3, okay? Let's go ahead and divide everything by three. That should simplify the equation a little bit, which would be helpful, obviously, right? So I should be getting this one, and that, that's gonna equal 13. Now, now think about this equation. We said that I'm gonna substitute this value into the first one and the second one. Now, if I plug it into the second one, what am I gonna find? Well, I'm gonna be finding something in terms of z and x, but I don't think I need that at this point. So I kind of changed my mind because if you look at the third equation, it is in Z and X. So basically I can use it, right? How can I use it? Let's copy that here and see what we can do about it. Okay, so I have Z squared plus ZX plus X squared is equal to 19. That's my second equation, right? I mean the third one, sorry. It's the third equation, Z squared plus ZX plus X squared is equal to 19. Now I have this system and this is going to be my next major step. Okay, first step was solving for y in terms of z and x. Second step was substitution into the first equation so that we could get another equation in z and x. And then my third equation is already in terms of z and x. Therefore, now I do have a system. I do have a system of equations, but this time it's in two variables, which is good because I should be able to solve it. But again, this is another challenge, right? I mean alone, this is an algebraic challenge because looking at this equation, like how am I going to solve this problem, right? I have numbers, I have variables, so on and so forth. And they're both quadratic. So here's a trick for solving these kinds of equations. We can go ahead and get rid of the numbers. How do you get rid of the numbers? Well, we can just go ahead and multiply the first equation, which is this one, right? We can take this first equation, which is equal to 13 and then multiply that by 19, okay? Let me go ahead and do that with a different color. So I'm gonna multiply that by 19, which is gonna give me 19 times 13 on the right-hand side, right? And then I can take the second equation, I can take the second equation, which is equal to 19, and multiply that by 13, which makes it 13 times 19. So I do have now, look at this, 19 times 13 is equal to 13 times 19, don't you agree? Yeah, commutativity property, it's a mouthful. Okay, so what do you do with this? Okay, this is gonna make things a lot better because now we got rid of the constants. Nice, let's do it. Let's distribute 19x squared minus 57xz plus 57z squared. On the left-hand side, I have that. On the right-hand side, 13z squared plus 13zx, or xz, doesn't matter plus 13x squared. Now, 
we don't have any constant, so I should be able to put everything on the same side, and I'm going to get another equation. Now, what am I going to do? I have 19x squared minus minus 13x squared. So that should give me 6x squared. So I've taken care of these. And then I have the xz terms, negative 57 minus 13. That should be minus 70xz. Z, x, x, z doesn't matter, right? 57 plus 13 is 70. Okay. And then I have 57z squared minus 13z squared. And that should make positive 44z squared. Now you might be saying like, isn't this like one of the other equations that we were working on? Yes, but with a difference. Now on the right hand side, I do have a zero, which makes a huge, huge difference, of course. Now we can go ahead and easily divide by two to simplify this. I'm always for simplifying things, you know, divide by two because zero divided by two is always zero. So now we got a quadratic equation. Well, somewhat, but there are two variables. Okay, cool. These types of equations, when they're homogeneous, meaning that you have zero on the right hand side, you can turn these into a really nice quadratic. How? By considering the following manipulation. It's always about manipulating things, right? It, well, it's, we're not manipulating people, we're manipulating expressions. So that's a good thing. What am I going to do? Well, first of all, notice that z or x cannot be zero, right? If z equals zero, then x equals zero. But does that work? If you go back to the original, if x and z are both zero, obviously that's not going to work. So x and z cannot be zero, obviously. So having said that, I can go ahead and divide everything by z squared. Now, why am I doing this? You'll see in a little bit, so stay tuned. I'm dividing everything by z squared. And of course, this is a good thing. Why? Because you can simplify. How do you simplify this? Well, you can just go ahead and cross out the z squared. You get 3 times x squared over z squared, which you can write as x over z squared. And then here, one of the z's will cancel out, and you'll be getting 35 times x over z. Hope you get the idea. Plus 22 is equal to 0. Now, this turns into a quadratic equation in x over z. You see the manipulations that we go through? Okay, it's kind of painful, but I hope you enjoyed it. So, we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and finish it up. Now, what am I going to get from here? Well, I'm going to use substitution. And you know that my favorite, favorite variable for substitution is u, right? Okay, x over z is equal to u. So, I get 3u squared minus 35u plus 22 is equal to 0. I'm going to solve for u, which is going to give me x over z. Okay, cool. Now, I'll use the quadratic formula. I mean, it's factorable, so on and so forth, but let's not get into that right now. Negative b plus minus the square root of 35 squared minus 4ac. Okay, nothing is a common factor, but don't worry, it's okay. This will simplify. How do you, how do you simplify this? Well, 35 squared is uh, 1225, right? There's a shortcut for that, which we can talk about later. It's 3 times 4. Uh, minus, if you multiply um, 12 by 22... I think you're going to get um, 264, right? Yeah. Okay, 264. Uh, so that's going to be minus 264, all right, divided by 6. Okay, what am I getting from here? Well, if you subtract those numbers, you should be getting 961. Okay, that's a good number. Why? Because 961 is 31 squared. Isn't that beautiful? So from here, we get u as... 35 plus 31 over 6 or 35 minus 31 over 6. Now, 35 plus 31 is equal to 66 divided by 6. That should be 11. And this would be 4 divided by 6, which is 2 thirds. Nice. So those are the u values, which means uh, x over z values. So if x over z is equal to 11, this means that x is equal to 11z. That's my first branch. And the second one is if x over z is equal to 2 over 3, then you can basically replace x with, you know, 2z over 3. You could do it this way, or one of the methods that I use that I like is you can call x 2k and z 3k and substitute and get the solutions that way too. Okay, now let's go back to our original equations. I mean, at least one of them. We know that z squared plus zx plus x squared is equal to 19, right? 
So z squared plus xz plus x squared is equal to 19. Now, if I assume that x is equal to 11z, I can just go ahead and substitute that. Uh, this is going to give me 11z squared, and this is going to be 121z squared, and the whole thing is going to be 19. From here, I can get the value of z. By substitution, I can get the value of x, and then by substitution again, I can get the value of y. And always remember that we have a formula for y because at the beginning, remember our very first step, we found that y is equal to 3z minus 2x, right? So let's write that down here. y is equal to 3z minus 2x. So that's something we can always use. Okay? Cool. Now, let's see what we get from here. Um, 1 plus 11 is 12. 12 plus 121 is going to be 132. So we're going to get 132z squared is equal to 19. And then from here, if you go ahead and divide both sides by 132, you should be getting z squared is equal to 19 over 132. And then you can square with both sides. And let's see if 19 goes into 132. 132 is 11 times 12. So unfortunately, there's not going to be anything we can do here. But x is going to be 11 times that. So x squared should be this number multiplied by 121. So 19 times 121 divided by 132. And then y would be this number, the square root of 3 times the square root of this number and minus 2 times the square root of this number. Obviously, this number is just going to have a 11 on the outside, and you can multiply that by 2. That's going to give you a 22. 3 minus 22 is going to give you negative 19. So something like negative 19 times square root of 19 over 132. Something like that you would get for y. So this gives us some values for x, y, z using the fact that uh, x is equal to 11z. What if I use the first one, I mean the second one? So suppose x is equal to 2k. I think that will be a safer route, or I don't know, I just like it that way. z is equal to 3k. And then if you go ahead and take this and plug it into this equation here, uh, z squared would be 9k squared, right? And then xz would be 6k squared. And then x squared would be 4k squared. And this whole thing is equal to 19. Now, this is going to give you a nice solution. You'll see that. Uh, this sum is going to give you 19k squared is equal to 19. Yay, finally. We get k equals 1 or k equals negative 1. Now, this means that x can be 2. And in this case, y would be, never mind. We're going to find z first. z would be 3. And now, remember the formula for y and z, 3z minus 2x. You see, I don't remember it, right? That's why I got to keep looking. So y is equal to 3z minus 2x. And in this case, it's going to be 3 times 3, 9 minus 2 times 2, which is 4. 9 minus 4 is going to be 5. So obviously, 2, 5, 3 is going to be a valid solution, as well as the other ones. They're radical, but this is going to be like an integer solution. And you can always check it, verify it. What if k is equal to negative 1? Then you would be getting x equals negative 2, z equals negative 3. And would you be getting a negative 5 from here? Let's go ahead and check it out. And it should work. Well, let's still check it out. 3z is going to be negative 9 minus, okay, minus plus 4. And that's going to give you a negative 5. Okay, cool. So it works from symmetry. Another solution pair or triple, I should say, negative 2 comma negative 5 comma negative 3, along with the other radical ones. But of course, in this case, when you said that z squared is equal to this, you also have to consider the plus minus signs because there's going to be two solutions from there as well. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Tomorrow, I'll see you with a geometry puzzle. And until then, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.